Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. He deserves the highest praise. Hallelujah. All glory, all honor belongs to Him and Him alone because He's good, He's great, and greatly to be praised. He deserves all of the honor, all of the praise that He gets. Sometimes our words fail us, but God is good and He is love. And today we just want to lift Him up. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, God, for your mercy that has been extended to us another day, another morning, O oh God. You have given us this gift of life. Lord, help us not to take it for granted, not to take life for granted, not to take anything for granted. Lord, your mercies, they are new every morning. So today, God, we look to you, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to you, God, because you are our source. We look to you because you who have started a wonderful work in us, a good work in us, you are more than able to complete it. So today, Father, I pray that you would bless the lives of your people and cause them, O oh God, cause them just to give you praise, cause us to worship and adore you for who you are, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and there is none like you, O oh God. Today, we come to hear a word from you. We invite you, O oh God, in our midst. Show up. Show up, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit tabernacle with us and infuse our lives so that after all is said and done, we are changed and we are transformed and we start to look more and more like you, Lord. That's our prayer. That's where our heart is. It's to serve you, O oh God, in spirit and in truth. Help us, Lord, to bring everything to you, everything. Those things that trouble us, that those things that cause anxiety and worry, because you do not want us to worry. Your word declares, O oh God, that we should be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, we should make our requests known unto you. So that's what we're doing today, God. So I ask you now to bless our lives, God. Bless our lives. Bless your word unto our lives. And cause it, O oh God, to come forth now with power, with anointing, and with clarity. So that that process, that process of change, that process, O oh God, that makes us more like you can begin. Thank you, Lord. Do for us now more than we can ask or think. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God. Good morning, good morning, friends, good morning. This is Diane, and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with a word from the Word of God. And it is always my hope that by the time we get to the end of today's devotion, your life will be transformed in some way. You will be motivated to carry on for Jesus to carry on on this path that we are on. It's not easy. It's not an easy road. I'm aware, <laughs> I'm so aware of that. But with the Lord on our side, with him guiding us and steering our ship 
we will be fine. We will be okay. The things that come to challenge us, the things that come to trouble us, would not be so much of an issue because the Lord is our guide and He's our source. All right, I just want to welcome everybody today. I have noticed over a period of time that there are some newcomers and I would just like to acknowledge you. If this is your first time joining in, welcome. And basically, you know, we just talk. <laughs> well, I just talk and hopefully something that you hear today will bless your life because the Lord wants us to grow from strength to strength in him. And that's what these devotions are about. It's supposed to be for half hour. Sometimes we go a little longer, <laughs> but God is good. And today I truly believe that he has a word for us that he wants us to take heed to. The Lord is so merciful, friends. When we look over our lives, whether we are saved or we have not yet made a solid commitment to Christ, all of us can declare that God is a good God. Every one of us. Because the Lord has been so merciful. There is so much that could have taken us out a long time ago. But the Lord has kept us and he has preserved our lives. And over the course of our lives, we would have gone through different things, different experiences, things that some of them we're not proud of. Some of them, you know, if we could live our lives over, we would stay clear of those things. But we are here today, experiences and all, good and bad, but we're still here. And today, friends, I want us to talk a little bit about skeletons in the closet. Skeletons in the closet, you know, some of us, let me, let me use the word some, right? And it's not because I am trying not to offend anybody right now. It's just that, let, let me use that word. Some of us have had some specific experiences in our past. And for some, they sought deliverance from whatever, you know, demons <laughs> would continue to uh, try to affect their lives as a result of the experiences that they have had. And then there are some who never really dealt with those skeletons in the closet. Those experiences that have triggered the rest of their lives, so to speak. Some people will tell you that they became homosexuals because of abuse that took place when they were young. Some would like to say, oh, we're born that we are whatever the you know the different stories are surrounding this issue but some people become homosexuals because it was introduced to them at an early age some people are lesbians because it was introduced to them at an early age and these are not experiences that people are proud of you know, so nowadays some say, well, this is the way I am now and I'm just going to accept who I am. So they do what you call come out of the closet. You know, they come from behind, you know, the, 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 the curtain and they come to the forefront and they say, look here, we want to be recognized. We want, you know, justice. And we want this and we want that. And then what happens is the rest of us who are not that way, we shun them and we say, you get back in that closet because, you know, that's where you belong. But a lot of times we do not empathize in any way as to how some people got the way they did. Now, there are some young ladies that we sometimes shun like, it may have happened to even us growing up, you know, abused. I once saw a ratio. I once saw a ratio. And it was very surprising to me. 
The Reisha said something like this. If you walk into a room and there are about 10 people in that room, 10 ladies in that room, or for every 10 ladies in that room, at least six of them have been abused, which represents more than half. And you hear things like that and you say, but how can this be? Because these women, they seem to be, you know, functioning and they're okay and they interact well and so on. But let me tell you something today, friends. There are a lot of people that we're looking at that are trying to put their best foot and their best face forward. But they have stuff that happened to them. There are some people that are angry all the time, just angry, just vexed. You cannot get even a good word into them before they're ready to tear your clothes off. Just angry, angry because of the experiences that they have had, angry because of the secrets that they are carrying, angry because of the skeletons in the closet. They feel that they do not have an avenue you know, some kind of safe place that they can share their experiences and not be judged and not be seen as outcasts. Some people have reputations that they try to protect. There are things going on in their lives now that they believe that if anybody should ever know what took place in their lives before, they would lose that level of respect. They would lose their place then in the world because they don't want anybody to know that their own father molested them or their uncle or a close family friend so they're carrying that baggage some people have witnessed things that really and truly they should not have seen at whatever age they were and they carry that there are so many things that people carry secretly, secretly. I shared with you yesterday, you know, a, a, a situation where of a pastor that I know that had homosexual tendencies and he messed around with the young boys in the church, but it was never dealt with. As a matter of fact, it was never even dealt with in the church because, you know, these things carry shame disgrace and even stigma so you have a bunch of young boys now because their experience turned them off so badly that they left the church and have not returned right so they have that carrying now which man you know that is straight then that had some sort of homosexual experience that you think would want to come to the mountain top and announce that, but it's affecting them. It's affecting their lives. It opened a door that they can't get closed. So you see some of these men, they marry, they marry women and they're trying to function as a husband in that home, but they have feelings for other men. Christians I'm talking to as well. I'm giving a scenario of people who left the church that I know of. But I'm talking about, what about those who came back but never truly got delivered from the experiences that they had, never really got a chance even to face their abuser because you see, that's what brings closure for some people. Today, friends, I'm talking about skeletons in the closet and then you have now persons who are trying to live their christian lives you know functioning in church um prayer leader praise and worship leader usher whatever post position pastor right first lady whatever the post is whatever it is and we come together now with our baggages, with our unresolved stuff, and all of us collide 
in a church setting, you know, didn't go through any type of deliverance at all, did not deal with our stuff, did not truly deal with it because some people believe that once you become saved, then everything is solved. That's not the truth. That's not the truth, friends. Once we become saved, everything is not automatically solved. And that's what some people are teaching. And that's why we cannot get ahead in the body of Christ. Because there are some people who believe that some things, you know, leave those skeletons in the closet. Leave them where they are. Leave them where they are. But I'm here to encourage somebody today that it's time to get delivered. It's time to be free. It's time to break away from those experiences, those things that you went through that were not pleasant, that are affecting your lives now, but nobody really knows from whence that came. All right? I give God thanks for all the work that he did in my life personally, my life. Because there are some things that I went through and the difference is, you know, I'm not saying I'm anybody special, but I give God thanks that he has taken away the shame and, you know, the stigma and the guilt and all of those things so that I can come today and I can speak boldly about some of the experiences that I've had. You understand? Without any shame, because that's what the devil does. Listen here. I'm going to read something for you and then we're going to talk about it. I read this passage yesterday and I'm, I'm going to read it again today, but in a different light, slightly. Listen, Luke 12, 2 to 3, it says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, Whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which you have spoken in the air in closets shall be proclaimed upon the house tops. Listen, friends, let me tell you how the devil works. You see, some of these things that I just described, some of these scenarios, the devil wants some people to be bound by that. That, listen... This is what happened to you. You can't do a thing about it. You can't change that. You are doomed. You are cursed. You're a reject. You are just a nobody. So don't come up here now, come trying to be somebody. You're a nobody. That's what the devil tells some people that the Lord has in his hands that the Lord Jesus Christ died for. And he comes. But the reason why I read this for us today and the angle that I'm coming at is, listen, when you know that there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, it would make you live a life, friends, that is a little bit more open unto God. Unto God. Allow him to open up the stuff so that you can get healed so that when the thing becomes known, it does not have you trapped and in guilt. Because, hey, there are some things that we try to hide. They're not going to remain hidden forever. They're not going to remain hidden. Now, when it becomes known, what will your reaction be? Will you feel like an outcast? Or you're going to stand in the liberty that Christ has given you? That's why I said yesterday that I do not allow the devil to blackmail me. There is no thing in my past that the Lord has not delivered me from to the point where I can talk about it freely, freely, freely. I shared with you yesterday about my trip to the prison over 20 years ago and why I went there. You know, some people would listen to that and say, oh, we didn't know that we thought so and so was you see because people look at your life and they think they have you all figured out friends I have absolutely nothing to hide because at the end of the day 
taking this verse here, these verses into consideration, there is nothing hidden, nothing covered that shall not be revealed. And that is why persons who have had certain experiences, right, who did not come to terms with that or allow the Lord to heal them to the point where they have gotten rid of that out of their lives, it is perpetuated. So the secret continues. So, for example, this pastor, whatever caused him to turn to that, to the point where he's now, or was doing it to the other young boys in the church. And then when the thing became known, it became known in a disgraceful way, but it was not dealt with. So I'm saying, friends, today, let us look at those things in our lives that we're trying to hide, that we're trying to cover. Nobody's saying that, you know, you're just going to come out and just be confessing stuff left, right and center. But I'm talking about your freedom here. What will it take for you to be totally free, free, free from your past, free, free, free? Because, friends, the Lord wants to use your life. If we stay with these things hidden to the point where it's, it continues to affect our lives and we are, we're not effective for God and we wouldn't open ourselves even to Him so that He can heal us. Because I'm telling you, friends, we're living in perilous times and the Lord needs, He needs people to carry His word and how you reach people at times is when you can identify with them. You can identify with their struggles. There are some, there are some people who are so um, aloof. It's like they did not go through anything. But to come and find out the mess that the Lord pulled them out of. But they wouldn't share it. They wouldn't say anything because they want people to think, you know, that, hey, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, you know, maybe think that I'm all that. But today, I'm asking you to think about your life and see how you can become more transparent. Because you see, it's going to help somebody. It's going to help somebody. Don't stay in your struggles alone. Do not just stay there. First, you're open to God and you say, Father, it's about time that I get over this because it's affecting my life. Some people were so badly abused that they don't want to have anything to do with any present relationship. So it's affecting even their current relationships because of what they went through before. They don't trust anybody. So some become very possessive in some case so they're always you know watching whoever they're with to make sure because of what they went through before but i would like to encourage us do not cover your situations do not cover your sins do not cover up those things that are holding you back because you see some are in church and they're doing you know ministry and all of that but a lot is going on a lot is going on under. Right? Proverbs 28, 13 declares, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So some say, you know, it's because of that why I am doing this. So they continue to do it. They continue to do it. Because they say, you know, my, my pain is justified. And my actions are, my actions are justified. Nobody knows what I went through, so give me a break, please. You know, and we make these excuses. But the word of God is saying to us today, do not cover. Do not continue to cover over things that are affecting our lives. All right? Confess and forsake those things that continue to haunt your life, that has you one foot in the church, one foot out, because you're not too sure which direction to go in. It's time to deal with the stuff 
that's holding you back. It's time to get rid of the skeletons out of the closet. Find somebody who you can trust. If you find you can't trust anybody, then tell it to Jesus. But the important thing is to get delivered. Get delivered because those things that continue to affect your life soon, maybe it already, it's already happening, will start to affect the lives of others. Sometimes innocent people get caught up in our struggles. All right? John 3, 19 to 20 says, and this is the, the, the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Listen, friends, there are going to be some times when you make up your mind to get out of the darkness and into the light, right? It, it brings exposure, and then the devil doesn't have anything to hold you on. Yes, he will try again, and he will try again, and so on. And we do fall into things, but I'm saying, when we bring our stuff out into the light, he doesn't have the leverage that he thought he had before. He doesn't have that upper hand like before. Because it's like you're saying, you know, God, just take my stuff. Take, take my stuff. I don't, I don't want this anymore. I want to move on with my life in you. I want to work for you, God. I want to know that when I lift my hands to praise you, it's coming from a real place. It's coming from an honest place, a genuine place. It's not a facade. It's not a pretense just to give a show like, you know, everything is okay. Everything is all right when it's not. Because I've found that the longer sometimes we take to even deal with our stuff, the more difficult it becomes to address it, to confront it. We will never change what we're unwilling to confront. And listen to this, friends. Nobody has the right to condemn you. I'll tell you that now. Because there is, therefore, now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there's a way to walk so that you can stay in the light. Stay in the light. It doesn't mean that you, you won't make any other mistakes. Yes, you will. But you take them to Christ. And you leave them at the foot of the cross. You do not allow anyone to condemn you. And that's why I testify. That's why I hold my head up. Because I want to see which demon can come with something from my past to get me now to turn away from God. You understand? Listen, this is a quote I made on Facebook a while back. And it was brought back to my memory. It is, sometimes the Lord uses greatly those who were living in sin deeply. Listen, I'm the way I am. I'm radical because of what God did for me. I don't know about anybody else per se, but I know what God did for me. And the Lord has a place for you, my friend. He wants to use your life. He wants to use those experiences that you had that you thought were so shameful and disgusting that it wouldn't reach anyone. Really? I challenge you today. I challenge you, friends, you know, to get rid of those skeletons. I challenge you. Do not allow the devil to blackmail you anymore. Do not allow him to keep you back because of skeletons. Oh, if people would only know. Whatever it takes to free yourself, free your mind, Talk to somebody. Talk to the Lord. Say, Father, I need my freedom and I need it. I need it. I need it now, Lord. I've shared with you all the days when I struggled with masturbation. And some people continue to say nothing is wrong with it, but that's on them, okay? And I'm talking about Christian people now. But it wasn't until I said, Lord, I am ready for a change. I do not want 
this anymore. That the change came. The deliverance came. That demon did not bother me anymore. Because I turned it over to Christ. I opened my mouth and I declared, Lord, I need your help. If you're struggling friends, some people are sex addicts, for example. And listen here, I'm not just talking to those who are not committed to Christ. I'm talking about Christian people, Christian people, right? Who have issues going on with them that nobody, if they were to open their mouth and say it, they're thinking that all it would bring is shame and disgrace and I'm saying friends let the Lord know what your struggle is and deal with it because it doesn't make sense to be married for example with a situation like that so you're sleeping around even on your spouse now ladies do it men do it Christian people I'm talking about because they have a problem there is an issue there that they're afraid to get dealt with. It's like, you know, I try. No, you cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. You need supernatural help. Cry out to God first and say, Father, I need you. And then ask him to show you somebody that you can trust, that can help you along the way. Not everybody is bad. Not everybody you know, talk people business. The devil is a liar. He tries to get us to think that way all the time because of the experiences that we have had. True. But ask the Lord to show you, to direct you, so that you can open up and get rid of some of this baggage that's creating so much havoc in lives because it's not being dealt with. We're in denial we think we're okay, but we're not. We're not. We need help. Now is the time, friends. Because the Lord is raising up a remnant. He's raising up some warriors who will not be ashamed or afraid to declare his name without anything holding them back. I know the devil is upset right now because, you see... Hearts and minds are changing about situations. And he's upset, but he's a liar. All right? We're covered under the blood of Christ. Let's get out from those things that are holding us back because we have unresolved issues, unresolved past, unresolved stuff holding on to resentment because of what took place 10 years ago, keeping us back. We're not effective. We're not effective. Some of us are running on residual power. You understand? Not connected to the source anymore, but because we know how to do the thing, we do it anyhow. And it's happening at all levels in the body of Christ. Don't think it's just lay people having these issues. I'm telling you, church leaders, ministers, pastors, bishops, apostles, preaching, teaching, laying hands, but have a lot going on, a lot of skeleton in them closet that they would not deal with and say, Father, I need your help here. This is killing me. I have to put on a face in front of the congregation. But when I leave their presence, this, this thing here, God, oh, it must be my thorn in the flesh. The devil is a liar. The Lord can and he will. So this is the admonition. 1 John 1, 5 to 7, and it says, this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. 
that's key right there. That's key right there. The reason why we have so many conflicts at times is because we're walking in darkness. We're walking in darkness. And I'm talking about unending stuff, you know. <laughs> Where, how can there be fellowship when the darkness seems to be overpowering our lives? But if we walk in the light, this is 1 John 5, 1 John 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Underline that word, all, all. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. All. So we have nothing to be ashamed about. You understand? That is under the blood of Christ. Whatever it is. Whatever those skeletons are. Right? Get rid of them. Free yourself in God. So that you can become effective for him. Your testimony will change lives. Will affect people in a positive way. Don't let the devil tell you any lies. That, oh, they think you were all that, but no, you know. I'm just saying, friends, it's time to deal with those things that are holding us back. Whatever they are, whatever they are. Is it a struggle in a particular area? Ask the Lord for help. He will deliver you. I'm a living testimony of that. All right? Don't let the devil come with anything to keep you bound tied up can't move forward in God because of all the stuff he has come with against their life people talk about you and you feel bad and you don't want to go back to church because they might talk about you come on come on come on we're stronger than that we will be stronger than that if we allow God to take care of our stuff. You have heard the phrase, let it be like water on duck's back. That's where I am now, friends. Honest little goodness. I have no time to stop and think about what the devil thinks about me or my past or my life or whatever. So that's why I say I tell it first. I clean out the closet. Long time. We understand. Just stuff, you know, residual stuff hanging around. It's time to sweep them away. Sweep them away because the Lord wants to use your life greatly. Sometimes the Lord uses greatly those who were living in sin deeply. Now listen to this. Listen to this. And this is key now. But it's not something that we should worry about. God forgives we know that. We know that the Lord forgives because we just read it. He cleanses, he cleanses us from all sin. But listen, there's this little word called consequence. So, for every decision, good or bad, there will be consequences. Alright? For every decision, there will be things that you have to deal with as a result of. But you let God take care of you. You understand? You let God take care of you because he wants you free. He wants us free. He's more than able. When I got pregnant out of wedlock, my, my I mean, the, the fornication, the sex was the sin, not my son. You understand? And I had to get that Somebody actually, you know, <laughs> made sure that I understood that. And I never forget it. So you move on. You ask the Lord to forgive you. He forgives. And then you deal with the consequences. You deal with the stuff that comes after. 
I mean, when I got pregnant, the people said the most disgusting things. And, you know, it, it happens. There are, there are some situations that happen in your life and you look back and the most you can do now is laugh because you said, thank you, Jesus. Now look, Lord, look how far you bring me from. And now this devil wants you to take steps back because of something that happened in your past so long ago. No. Walk out your consequences, man. Deal with that. Let the Lord you know cover you you will be all right let them talk let them talk you will be fine the lord will use you greatly even if you are living in sin deeply all right i used to hear some people in churches who never really had certain experiences you know because it's not everybody grew up in a particular way rough and you know I guess some had a silver spoon in their mouth even if it wasn't gold but I've heard people testify all the time and say look here I've heard some testimonies of hardship and so on and that isn't my testimony some of them even went as far as saying that they would you know add on stuff to their stories to make it sound as if they, <laughs> they went through stuff that they really didn't that's not even necessary I'm just saying there really are some people who are struggling now because of the past, because of the things that they encountered. And it's affecting their walk with Christ now. It's affecting their relationships now. I'm telling you, when I see even the way some people act over certain things, I could tell something went on there. Why? Perhaps because I had experienced the same thing. But the signs, it's there, it's telling. The signs are there. So let us get healed, friends. Let us get delivered. Let's get those skeletons swept out of the closet. If you can't say it, write it. Write it. Just write a letter. Write a letter to God. Write a letter to somebody. But it's time to be free. All right, I'm going to pray. I just ask the Lord to... Help us, help his people to get past our past. Because some people are stuck, stuck at who abused, who hurt, who did this, who, you know. It's time to be free, it's time to be free. It's time to be free. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God, we come to you now. We praise you, God, because you are the fixer. You are the one that created us. And long before we were conceived, O oh God, you knew us. You knew the path that our lives would take. You knew the experiences that we would have. You knew the troubles that we would see. But Lord, you are a fixer. So right now, God, I ask you to move into the hearts, into the minds of your people and do surgery. Do a work, oh God, that they will know that it was you that touched them. Let your healing hands know, oh God, Reach into their lives. Let it be like warm, liquid fire just pouring out on the inside. Let your Holy Spirit do that work. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. You are, you are definitely here. My God, just move through these airwaves right now and let your healing work begin, oh God. Let your healing work begin. Many have been through many, many hardships, many difficulties, things that they dare not or they think that they dare not even mention. But Lord, let the healing happen. Let it happen, oh God. Yes, Lord, do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. 
let your spirit do the work that's necessary at this time so that lives, oh God, can be so transformed and you can use those lives, oh God. That's what you want. That's what you're saying even now. I have need of you. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray right now that every hurt and pain that has held your people bound will be supernaturally, supernaturally removed, O oh God. Take the sting out. Take that deep, deep, deep pain, O oh God, that would just cause some to cry at times. Just cry. Father, I thank you. I bless your holy name because only you can do this deep work, O oh God. Do it, God, by your spirit. Because we know, God, that it's not by might, it's not by power. This is a spiritual work, even now. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Let your peace, O oh God, wash over their lives. Those who have been tormented, tormented, tormented by their circumstances, tormented. It's like they have no peace whatsoever. They would be good now, and by later on, it's something else. Lord, I thank you now that you're doing a mighty work even in the stillness of this moment even without noise and excitement Lord I ask you now to do such a work that they will see the manifestation of your power from this day on oh God forgive your people those, oh God, who committed murder, even in the form of abortions that haunts them even to this day because they say nobody knows but you and I, Lord. Lord, those who witness things that has totally messed up their lives, Help them, Lord. Those who were abused, even physically by their parents, emotionally. Some were beaten, oh God. Beaten and scarred, marked. Marked for life. But help them, oh God, to understand that the only mark that matters right now is the mark that you have on them. You have marked them for greatness. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. When they see the scars, O oh God, they remember the terrible experience they had. But Lord, you can remove that scar and only leave your mark behind. So, Lord, I thank you that you're doing a great work. Not only were some beaten, but some were burnt. Yes, Lord, you're, you're showing me somebody who was burnt as a child, as a form of punishment. And now they're angry. They're still angry because... That's what love looked like. Father, heal your people today. Let your healing flow, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Cause them to come to grips 
with their past to the extent where they understand that you, O oh God, are wiping that slate. You're wiping it. You're wiping it so that they can work for you, so that they can be effective for you, so that they can be effective in ministry, walking with you, trusting you, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Those who are abused, let that healing come. Those who are being affected even now by the things that affected them then, bring healing, bring closure, bring resolution, O oh God. Let them not wonder anymore if they're saved or not. But help them to yield to you totally. Yield to your will. Yield to your way. Yield to your way of doing things. Yield to your commands, O oh God. Some are rebellious. Just angry and rebellious. Because of what they went through. So Lord, I pray now that your peace will overshadow their lives. Lord, they will testify of your goodness they will testify of your goodness they will sing your praises the devil will not be able to shut them up because they will testify and their testimony will bring deliverance to many oh God help your people today Yes, Lord, we are depending on you. We trust you, Father. You specialize in healing. I am now declaring, God, that you are a healer in every aspect. You have healed me, O oh God, from a broken heart. You have healed me, O oh God, from physical, spiritual, emotional abuse. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for healing me physically. Lord, whenever the enemy rises up against our lives, oh God, help us to look to you because you are the answer. So Lord, today I pray freedom, 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 freedom over your people's lives. Freedom. They will not walk with their head held down anymore. Because, Lord, they will give their stuff over to you and let you carry it. They will not be burdened anymore by all the junk, by all the stuff that's trying to clog them up and to hold them back and to keep them in a rut where they cannot move ahead. They cannot seem to be able to move ahead. It's like they're stuck. So Lord, I pray right now, your deliverance over their lives. Let them experience you, oh God, in a brand new way. Give them an encounter with you that they will never forget. Lord, let your people know that you are with them. You are with us because you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So we give you thanks now, God, because you have already started a good work and you will complete it. They are not failures. Thank you, God. They are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. They will go over and not under. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Friends, you are more than conquerors. Through Christ, who loves you, who loves us, more than a conqueror. Do not allow situations anymore to keep you down and to keep you back. Whatever labels people have put on your life, just let the devil know that he's a liar 
and you look to God because you see some people are carrying labels they're carrying the names of what people call them because they don't understand them and they don't understand their purpose do not wear any label from the devil do not there's a saying that it's not what you're called but it's what you answer to exactly do not answer to any foolishness anymore when people speak certain things towards your life reject it if it's not positive reject it if it's not uplifting wholesome godly reject it if you heard that they said this and they said that and it's not positive wholesome and godly don't even pay them any mind stay focused stay focused focus on what the lord is doing in your life right now because he's moving you from strength to strength from glory to glory stick with god and watch him transform your life people will not be able to recognize you after this as a matter of fact you may not even be able to recognize your own self you understand because the lord would have done a work in you and he continues to work on our lives so you stay with god and let him validate you Yes, it's okay to get a compliment from somebody. Yes, it's okay to be told how wonderful you are, but never let it get to your head. All right? Let God validate you. Let God be the one to say, you know, hmm, I did a wonderful job with you. <laughs> let that be God, because he really did. Because if we hang on to man's validation, today they give it, tomorrow they pull it. All right? They give you their word today and by later, they pull it. They pull the rug from under you. As long as you are, you know, doing what they like and what they prefer, you're okay with them. But the moment you start to think for yourself, it becomes a problem. Do not let that trouble you, friends. The Lord is doing a work. Let him move you past your past to the extent where it does not affect your life negatively anymore. So it doesn't keep you in a pattern of sin. Remember we talked about the dark and the light. Let it be that you are going after the light. Seek the light. Search out the light. Go towards the light. It may cost you some stuff. It may cost you some friends. It may cost you something, but hey, that's the price. All right, no compromise. Don't back up because, oh, they know my past. The devil is a liar. Do not step back into the dark with the devil because he threatened that if you move into the light, he's going to do this and do that. The devil is a liar. You step on out with God and trust God to do a mighty work in your life. All right? I do believe that there is more ahead for you than what's in your past. So you step out by faith with God, knowing that you cannot, you cannot fail when God is with you. All right? No. What we look at as failure at times is not a failure. It's just one way that we learn that it cannot work. So we try again. All right, friends. I love you. Praying for you. Yes, I do. I give God thanks for you. And it is always my desire to encourage and motivate you to live more meaningfully for God because that all that's that's really all that matters all right all the other stuff can wait all the other stuff can stay but our relationship with God that's what matters let's be true let's be real let's be genuine 
let's bear ourselves before him okay all right may the lord bless you today and like i always say until we meet again in this fashion i don't only want you to take care <laughs> but i also want you to know that you are blessed all right god bless you